Good morning, everyone. So my name is Andrea Kosha. I am an instructional technologist and I work at Faculty Technology Center. Welcome to today's session of final exams in Canvas. Um, before we get started, I wanted to remind you of our Keep Teaching uh, resource page that links a lot of resources on accessibility, communication, and also all our contact information for the Help Center, the Faculty Technology Center, Universal Design Center, all these resources available for you to assist you. And also I want to highlight the resources and tools page that has a whole bunch of resources for various topics such as Canvas and Zoom. And when you click on one of those topics, you will see that we are linking a whole bunch of materials there for you to follow up and get even more information after this session. Once we have a good recording of the Canvas final exams, we will post that up as well on this page. So just wanted to make sure everyone is aware of that. So today, we are going to be talking about final exams in Canvas, how you can get these done. So first, we're going to discuss um, creating a final exams in Canvas, um, the, the options you have available to you. We're going to start with talking about the option to use an assignment as your final exam in Canvas. And also we're then going to be talking about doing a Canvas quiz as the final exam. And we're going to be discussing the various options you have there and the types of questions you can create. We're gonna cover some common ones and how to create them. We're also going to be discussing shuffling, uh, randomizing answers for things like multiple choice or multiple answers. We're going to be also discussing how you can randomize the orders of questions and how you can achieve that in Canvas. We're also going to look at the grading aspect of quizzes in Canvas since it is slightly bit different than grading just assignments. And we're uh, going to finish up discussing how you can uh, provide things like extra time for a student or um, extra attempts. Also how you can allow a student to take the quiz at a different time than the rest of the class. We're gonna be covering how you can get that done in Canvas as well. So as I said, in the beginning, you don't have to use Canvas quizzes to uh, do the final exam. So a great case that I like to use as an example is, for example, if your final exam is usually a very lengthy essay where the students get to pick from a few topics uh, and write, uh, you know, like, uh, two page or three page essay on the topic and that's kind of the structure of your usual final exam in person, then perhaps you do not need to use quizzes, you can just use an assignment for that. So we're going to cover how you can do that. So we're going to create an assignment from the assignment section in Canvas, clicking plus assignment. And what we're going to do if Canvas wants to collaborate with me today, we're going to set this up to have very stringent um, availability dates and time so that it's only open for the two hours. And we're also not going to publish until like the minute before we want the students to start working. So the students can't see the prompt ahead of time because the assignment is not published to them. And therefore you just, tell them, okay, at two o'clock, that's when the uh, assignment starts, you will be going to the assignment section and you'll find the final exam there and the prompt, so follow that prompt. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a final exam as assignment and going to provide the prompt here. Oh no, I clicked away from my page. So we're going to provide the prompt. Please choose one of the following five topics and write an essay response 
on that topic. Limit yourself to a thousand words. And then I'm going to provide the five topics. I am copying these from a list of topics regarding World War II. And, okay. Okay, all right, cleaning it up. So topic one is entry of the US in the war, then topic two, three, four, and five. So I have five topics for the students, and then I'm going to decide how many points this assignment is worth. I'm gonna leave it at 100 points, and I'm going to display the greatest points, but I could choose percentage as well. Now, what I'm going to choose as submission type is online text entry. What this means is that they will get a box just like this to type their entry and they'll be able, for example, to indent, uh, align, bold. So it's kind of like a basic word interface right here. Of course, some more complicated things uh, are not possible, but they can also put tables, insert images, link to other things. They can even insert equations so they can put all that together there. Um, you can also choose to um, do a plagiarism review on their submissions, even though it's text instead of a file. Um, we do cover this more in depth in the Canvas Intermediary. So if you're interested in plagiarism review, please do attend one of those sessions. And I'm gonna turn off peer review. So again, I'm going to make this um, available from 10 10 a.m right now that's in a minute from now and i make it available for an hour so the students have one hour so i'm gonna put 11 10 a.m so the students will have one hour for this and i'm going to make it do Then, okay, I'm going to make it do at the same time that it is no longer being going to be available. So everything is set up. I'm going to only save. I'm not going to publish. And we're going to go into the student view so you can see that for me as the instructor, I can see this right here as the assignment. But if I go as the student view, right here. I'm gonna reset the student view, just so we, okay. So when I go into assignments, as the student view, the student has no assignment available. So the other assignments I had were closed. There we go. So the student does not see the final exam. They see all these old ones, these undated ones, but the final exam as an assignment is not visible here for them. So I'm going to leave the student view and it's now past 10, 10. So I'm going to publish this Let's imagine it's 10, 10. I'm publishing this. So now when I go again to the student view, and go to the assignment section, you can see that now they're seeing the final exam as assignment. Yes, we're covering the option to use assignment type instead of quizzes. We'll be covering quizzes afterwards. So this is a 
uh, a showcase of the possibility of using assignments instead of quizzes, as I said in the beginning um, of this presentation. So you can see now the student can see the title, they can see the entire prompt and instructions, and when they click submit assignment, they get this box where they can type in their essay. So again, you don't have to use uh, the quizzes if your exam is something like this you don't have to use quizzes as the assignment as for your final exam so let's then cover using actual quiz as the final exam so i'm going to go into the quizzes section so again if the final exam is something straightforward where they're just writing a long essay um, then maybe using the assignment type instead of quizzes might be the answer. So uh, now we're going to be covering making actual quizzes. So when we're creating a quiz, uh, of course you need a title. So this is final exam as quiz. And here you'll be writing up um, information, instructions, prompt. Keep in mind that the students can see the quiz instructions ahead of time. So obviously you shouldn't put your questions in there um, ahead of time, if the, depending on the availability dates as well. Um, but do keep in mind that these are visible to the students as long as the quiz is published. Um, so let's just put, please, answer the four questions within the allotted one one hour so if i so keep this simple something like the time limit how many questions there are what things they should know uh, as they get started on the quiz things like that we're going to be covering graded quiz because of course it's a final exam i'm assuming you're wanting to give them credit for this and we're going to cover all these options here and then we're going to talk about questions and the kind of questions you can add we're going to cover four um, question types that are probably fairly uh, popular and useful to use um, canvas has a lot more than that but we're going to be covering four main ones so in the options here do know that I like an assignment. I don't get to tell Canvas how many points this is worth. I'll be doing that by telling Canvas how much each question is worth. So that's how points work for um, Canvas quizzes. So the first option is shuffle answer. This is a very useful option, especially for multiple choice, multiple answer, where the students will get a different order of uh, options for them between each other. So student A will see a different order of answers than student B, even though they're seeing the same possible answers. The only caveat with this is that you must make sure that you are not sequencing your answers. So if you are labeling your answers a, as A, B, C, D, obviously you cannot use shuffle answers because it will create this weird like D, C, A, B order and other random orders that will be uh, confusing. Uh, we're going to turn it on because we're not going to sequence the options at all. We're going to give time limit of 60 minutes, and when we get to the availability dates, we'll, I'll explain how the time limit interacts with the availability date. You can allow multiple attempts. I do believe that most people don't allow that for final exams. Uh, the next section has to do with the kind of feedback students receive. This is the default. We'll get to what this will create in a second, but first we're gonna turn all of that off and then start turning things on and I'll be explaining to you what kind of feedback the students see with the different settings. So with nothing enabled, what the students get once they finish the quiz is a grade. And that's it. They do not see which questions they got correct or incorrect. They don't see any feedback whatsoever except the grade. If I turn this on and nothing else, 
it's called let students see their quiz responses. What this does is at the end of the quiz, they see the grade, they'll also see which questions they got incorrect. So they'll see you got question three wrong, you got question five wrong. So they'll know what were the correct answers for the ones they got correct, because they'll know that they're correct. But they won't know what the correct answer is for the questions they got wrong. The next option we're going to turn on is let students see the correct answers. Once we turn this on, they won't just see the, that they got a question correct. They will also see what was the correct uh, answer for that question. And they will see that immediately. If I enter a date next to show correct answers at, then the correct answers will not be shown immediately, but will be shown from that day onward. So if I set it up to show tomorrow at 8 p.m., after that date and time, they'll be able to see the correct answers. I can also choose to hide the correct answers after a certain amount of time. Those are useful for uh, midterms, for example, when you might want them to see the correct answers, but only for a week or two. Um, this, of course, showing the correct answers only after a certain amount of time is a useful tool if you want to make sure that the correct answers are not shown for a certain amount of time so that if other students have to take the exam at a different time, they don't have uh, the benefit of that information because their classmates had, would not have seen the correct answers. So it's a very useful tool. We're going to leave things set up like this where they will see which questions they got wrong immediately, but they won't see what was the correct answer until um, a day later. Again, you can turn all of this off and then all they get is a grade. The next option is whether or not to show one question at a time. When you turn that on, you can also lock questions after answering. So if you're not locking the questions, the students can go back and forth between the questions. Um, if you lock the questions, as soon as the student goes um, <clears throat> to press next, they can't come back to the question. They get a warning telling them uh, that they, uh, they can't come back. Uh, this is useful for some people, depending on how you want the students to do it. We're going to leave it off. Um, so that you can see all the questions on one page, but it is available as an option to you. The last portion has to do with the dates and uh, times for the final exam. If we are mimicking an actual in-person exam, then these dates have to be a lot tighter. So for example, we're going to make this available from 10 a.m until 11 a.m. So theoretically, this is open for one hour. And we're gonna make it do the same time as when it is closing. So this is an exam that's open for one hour for the students, and there's a time limit of one hour. Now, how does this work in Canvas? The way this works in Canvas is that if a student starts at 10 a.m., they get the 60 minutes and they get cut off at 11 a.m. However, if a student is like me starting at 10, 20 a.m., for example, they will only get 40 minutes because the quiz cuts them off either when the until date and time have passed or when the time limit has been reached, whichever comes first. Um, so again, students have to start on time in order to get the full time limit. Of course, if you're making the final exam open for 24 hours and then limited to 60 minutes once they get started, then they can start anytime during that 24 hours and they'll have their 60 minutes. The other thing to keep in mind is that this timer starts the minute they click take the quiz and they see the questions. Doesn't matter if they lost their internet connection, close the browser, close the computer, they can't come back past the time limit. So let's see an example. Let's say a student is 30 minutes in, they close the quiz, 
they don't come back to it until two hours later, they cannot continue, the 60 minutes have passed. Another example is a student clicks take the quiz, then closes it, the timer continues in the background, if they come back a day later, the 60 minutes have long passed, they cannot continue the quiz, it was auto submitted for them with no questions uh, answered. Same if they, for example, lose internet midway through, then again, this is a time limit. If they come back within the time limit, they can continue. If they don't, they will not. And uh, we will answer questions at the end, okay? So I do see your questions and I'll answer them at the end, okay? So uh, again, the time limit is something you decide and you choose whether to put it on or not. I'm putting it on so that you guys can see what that looks like from the student point of view as well with the quiz. Uh, and we're also gonna uh, cover towards the end how to give people more time, how to give people another attempt or allow them to take it at a different time. So we're going to be covering some accommodations of that sort as well. So these are the settings we've set up this to be open for an hour from 10 to 11. We also give a time limit of 60 minutes. We're only going to save. We're not going to save and publish a quiz until you are perfectly satisfied with all the questions. We haven't added any questions. I just wanted to show you the summary of the quiz that we get with all those settings. So when you look at your quiz, you will see the prompt you will see all your settings summarized here as well as the date. And when you preview, you'll see just the instructions right here and when it started. And here's the timer right here. As I said, this opened at 10 a.m., but it is now 1024. So I only get 36 minutes now, 35 minutes instead of 60 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna click keep editing this quiz to start adding questions. So the four question types we're going to cover today are multiple choice, fill in the blank, multiple answers, and essay question. We're gonna cover these four types. I'm gonna show you how you create them, explain how they work, explain how they get graded, and then we're going to um, also try to get them uh, randomized, the order of the questions randomized. So when you go to a question tab, if you have no questions, you will see plus new question button right here. This is how you create a brand new question. At the top here, you get to uh, label the question. I like to label my questions because if I end up with 50 questions in a quiz, if I need to reorder them or do anything with them, trying to go by the prompt will be a lengthy exercise. So uh, I like to label my questions, but this is not shown to the students when they are taking the exam. They all just see question number one, question number two, etc. They don't see these labels. The box next to that is where you choose a question type. As I said, we're gonna be covering only certain ones, but you can see there's more. Uh, options available. So the first type we're going to cover is multiple choice. We're going to leave it out of two, one point. So here you can change how many points each question is worth. We're going to give a prompt. So I'm going to ask which country joined World War II in on September 3rd 1939 and by default it gives you four options you can add more by clicking add another answer right down here you can also delete options if you want fewer when you hover over an options to the right you get a little trash can that's how you can delete uh, you also don't have to make the first one the correct answer. That's just the default. And as I said, I turned shuffle answer on, so it doesn't really matter where I put the correct one. But for showcasing purposes, I'm going to make the third one as the correct option. And I'm going to put UK there. And 
to make this the correct answer, I hover over it and I get this pale green arrow. I click it and now correct answer is the third option. I'm gonna put some fake, mm, terrible options right here. Two of them make zero sense because those guys were on the side of Germany, but here we go. And then to save the question, I click update question. Again, if I just click save at the bottom without having clicked update question, that question will not be saved. It'll be lost. So always, always click update question. We're gonna pick three more questions. The second one is gonna be fill in the blank. And from the box where it says multiple choice, I'm gonna choose fill in the blank. Now, despite its name, and again, I'm gonna leave the points to one, but I could have changed it. Uh, despite its name, it doesn't automatically put a blank inside your sentence. Uh, the blank will appear at the bottom after your sentence or prompt. So do keep that in mind. However, we can use the underscore symbol on our keyboard to create a blank of our own. So we're going to put Blanks, uh, let's put this way. UK joined World War II on September 3rd, and then put underscore right there for our blank. That's supposed to be the year. And down here, you're supposed to give Canvas all the answers that are correct. So for example, I'm going to be very pedantic. I'm going to put the actual uh, year, but then I'm going to write 1,019. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put that as a possible answer. I don't need four, so I'm gonna remove the other one. So these are the only two answers that will be marked as correct. And then I click update question. So with multiple choice, you're entering correct uh, and incorrect answers. With fill in the blank, you're only entering which are the correct answers. And we're gonna add another question. This time we're going to add in multiple answers. And, and where it says fill in the blank, we will choose multiple answers. Again, I could choose the points, but I'm gonna leave it to one point. The way this one works is that you will be providing a whole bunch of answers and the students have to pick all the correct answers in order to get points, and they get penalized if they choose an incorrect option. So, okay, the following countries declare war on Germany on September 3rd, 1939. And now, by default, it's just giving two answers. I'm gonna put um, UK and France. And then I'm going to click add another answer to put in more fake answers. Poland and Italy. And I'm actually gonna add another one, Japan. So there's only two correct answers. You can uncheck which are correct right here by clicking the arrow. You can also make other answers correct by hovering and clicking the faded uh, arrow. You can have as many correct answers as you want. Um, the way it works is, so we have two correct answers. That will determine the value of each answer. So we have two correct answers here. Each of them will be worth half of this total point. So this is one point. This will each be worth half a point. And then they'll also get penalized if they also select an incorrect option. And I'll show you how that works once we uh, preview and take uh, the, this particular um, ex uh, exam. The last question type is essay question, and I like to include this one because it's one, very uh, much used. And second of all, I'm gonna make it out of 10 points. The difference between this and all the other types that I've covered and most of the question types in Canvas, there's no 
correct answer for an essay question. So you will have to grade the essay question, of course, because there's no one correct answer when it comes to an essay type question. So write about the impact, the show impact of World War II on France in 500 words or less. So in this box, you'll be writing the prompt, the information, any details that you would like. Uh, and then the students get this kind of box to answer the question. The students cannot draw. Unless they're taking it on an iPad, the students can't really draw. They can embed an image from here. They can upload an image to Canvas and put it here. I mean, you can get them to do some rudimentary drawing in Paint and then have them embed the picture in here you can do that but do keep in mind that they're using a mouse to um to do this so it can only be yes you can add any image or um so right here in the second row is a picture of mountains when you click that you can embed an image um that you upload you can go and upload a file right here you don't have to upload ahead of time strongly suggest that you go to and upload it to my files instead of course files so that the students can't see it ahead of time um, and uh, you can embed any picture here obviously graphs are most of the time some form of gif or png they're usually images so the same process goes for putting in a graph and that works also for all the other prompts that i show so you can have a multiple choice be a graph and then the questions below refer to and um, to the graph the answers below refer to that graph so you can have all of that okay so i'm going to save this the only thing is do keep in mind the multiple choices and fill in the blanks those kind of questions their answer is text only so the student answer can't get too complicated unless it's an essay type question okay so when we preview this particular quiz it's not published yet so i'm just previewing it to see what it looks like we get the questions right here there's my multiple choice i'm going to pick the correct answer for this and then i'm going to pick the incorrect answer for this one and i'm going to pick uh, let's see uh, two correct and one incorrect just so you can see and this is what they get for an essay type question you can see they can embed the image they can link to a url right here they can also um, record video, they can put in tables, all sorts of things, but only for essay type questions. All the other ones you see is just a text box for fill in the blank. Okay, so here are some my essay. I'm not gonna make you sit here while I write gibberish. So I'm gonna submit the quiz and now we get to see what kind of feedback a student would get. So you can see that they get told the correct answers are not available until tomorrow. They get a score with an asterisk. And um, you'll see when I go to the actual student view that the asterisk tells them that there's a question that has not yet been marked. So I told the system to show them incorrect uh, answers immediately. So it tells the student question two was incorrect and question three was partial. So again, what I was saying is that how many correct answers you have determine the value of each option so what happened here is i chose two correct options okay we had two in for one point so each option is worth 0 0.5 i chose two correct so i got one point for that but i chose one incorrect so i lost half a point this cannot go below zero so even if I had chosen all of them, I just get zero. I wouldn't get minus 0 0.5 uh, points. Um, but basically for multiple answers, they get penalized for just guessing and picking the wrong thing. They have to get 
for the full points, they get, have to get exactly the precise, all the uh, correct options. Again, you can have as many options as you want here. If you want 10 options where three are correct, you can do that, okay? And there's the essay one where it tells the student is not yet graded, okay? Last thing we're going to do is we're gonna go back to editing this quiz in order to get it. So all three of these questions at the top, I want them to be presented to the students in a randomized order. I don't want the students to see these questions in the exact same order. This works a lot better if you have 20, 30 questions. Obviously, we only have three questions, so we can only get so many uh, random orders from three questions, but we're, we're going to showcase that and we're going to use question groups for that. The way question groups are designed are you make a bucket of questions and you tell the system how many questions to pick out of that bucket. So it will pick each time the quiz is uh, started by a student, it will pick at random the amount of questions that you have told it to pick from the bucket. What we're going to do is we're going to trick the system. We're going to tell the system to pick as many questions from the bucket as we have in the bucket. So what this will end up resulting in is all the students will see the same questions, but they will see them in a different order because every time a student starts a quiz, the bucket is getting empty in a different order. Okay, so how do we get this? We already have our questions. We're gonna add new question group. So we'll call this randomize. And we're going to tell it to pick three questions because I'm gonna put these three questions here worth one point each. The caveat with the question groups is all the questions inside have to be worth the same amount of points. So let's say you have a whole bunch of uh, questions with worth one point, a whole bunch of questions worth two points. You just make two question groups, one for the one point questions, one for the two point questions, and you'll still get a pretty randomized order of questions. So we're gonna now click create group. If we don't click that, it won't create it. It's empty right now. It's warning us that it's empty. And I'm just gonna drag these questions right into the group. We do cover a lot more details about question groups in Canvas Advance, if you are curious for other uses for question groups. But uh, right here, we have three questions. There's the three questions. We're going to save. And now we're going to preview it two times. The first time we preview, unlike before, you see that the essay question is at the top because I moved the question group after it. But you can see we still have multiple choice uh, and fill in the blank. However, if I go back to my quiz, and I preview again. I'm getting the same order. What did I do? Okay, one second. Okay, there it is. Okay, this is the problem with only having three questions. It's harder to showcase the randomized order. Okay, finally, it updated. So again, if you have like 20 questions, this is a lot more apparent. I usually when I show this, I have nine questions and it's quite apparent. But the idea is that the um, order of the questions will change each time the students open up. Obviously, the more questions you have, the more possible orders there are and the less likely it is for two students to have the identical same final exam. And I kept uh, the essay question separate because it's worth 10 points. So I didn't want to put it in there because it's worth a different amount of points. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go edit this and publish it so that we can go into student view and actually take it as a student. 
So going to the home page, going to click student view, go to Of course, I'm going to eventually be adding these to my modules, but for now, we're just working with the quizzes section. So right here is what the students see. They see the name. They see how many points and how many questions there are. They see when it's due, how long it's available, and what the time limit is. For the quiz, they also see your instructions. They see all this information as long as the quiz is published. So again, remind Reminder that these instructions are visible to students as long as the quiz is published, even if it's not yet available. So um, I'm going to click take the quiz as a student. And when I look, I get my essay question. I get my fill in the blank as the last option. I'm going to answer this. So this one I'm going to pick. Uh, correct. This one I'm going to pick three options and I'm going to make this one correct. And I'm going to submit the quiz. And it's just slightly different than our preview page. They get this attempt history that doesn't show up for you on the um, preview page. So they get this and they get a little warning, some questions not yet graded. They get told when the correct answers will be shown. There's their grade, when it was submitted, how long they took, and they see that this is not yet graded and then they get the questions and are told that this is partially correct. And now if we leave the student view, we can go back to our quiz and we are going into the speed grader so we can look at how grading works for this um, interface. So unlike assignments, over here on the right hand side, you do not get the, gr the grade is grayed out because all the grading is supposed to happen on the left hand side where all the questions are. Okay, so you can see we're going to go to bottom, the fill in the blank, it tells you the prompt, it tells you what the student wrote, it tells you that it was correct, it also lists for your reference the which options you considered correct, you can leave a comment right here for each question if you want to, there's where the point value is right next to each question. The next question, this is the multiple answers. Again, it tells you the prompt. It tells you what the students picked and which ones were considered correct. So it will slap the correct label on the correct options. Again, you can leave comments and you can see the points are right here. Question two is multiple choice. Again, it will show you what the student chose and also which is the correct answer. So it would have had this label and if they had chosen incorrectly. And you again, you can leave comments and there's the point right here. For the essay question, there is no point because it was not automatically graded by Canvas. So I would go and review how well they did. I can give them comments over here you know, let's pretend this is a great essay. So you can leave them comments over here. You can get as detailed as you want. You can drag this out to be as big as you want. You can write a lot here if you need to. And then you'd give them a grade here. So let's give them an eight out of 10. So once you're satisfied with all the points, for all the questions, you just hit update scores. And once you do, the comments and the points values are saved. Um, and of course, if this is not, if the grades are not hidden for this particular exam, then they'll see the grade immediately as well. You can still leave overall comments on the right hand side. You can record uh, yourself leaving a comment. You can upload a file as a comment or just type in your comment. But the grading is all happening inside here on the left hand side. And once you are done, you hit update scores. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to this. 
So I have graded, one student has taken this and I have graded their work. The thing we're going to be showing is how do you give students uh, things like extra time or have the student take the exam at a different time or um, give them another attempt. So the first thing we're gonna start with is giving the students another attempt. So when I click moderate this quiz, when I'm looking at my quiz over here on the right hand side above speed grader is moderate this quiz. When I click that, I can see that test student has taken the quiz, how long they took to finish, how many attempts they have left, what is their score. I will see this for all the students. If they are currently taking the quiz, I will see a, t a time right here running down how long they still have, how long they've been in the quiz, etc. So if I want to give the student another attempt, I just click the pencil to the right, and this is where I can give extra attempts as well as extra time. So this student, I'm gonna give them one more attempt because they already took the quiz. I wanna unlock it for them. So I'm gonna click next to manually unlock the quiz for the next attempt and click save. So now this test student can take the quiz again. Why would you want to do that? Let's say the student lost internet or anything happened uh, that prevented them from completing the quiz or even getting to do anything with the quiz. You can give them another attempt to take the quiz if you would like to. So this is how you do that. Now the next thing we want to give the first uh, Herbert test one, we want to give them an extra 60 minutes. We do that here, first of all. So again, the blue pencil to the right, instead of extra attempts, we're gonna give extra minutes. So everything appearing on this screen is extra. So the system tells me, oh, everyone already gets 60 minutes. So whatever I write here is on top. So when I write 60 minutes, that means that student is getting two hours. So Herbert test 01, that student is now getting two hours. However, we need to go back to our quiz because our quiz is only open for one hour. The system, there's, even if the student started at 10 a.m., they would not get two hours at 11 a.m., they would get cut off. So I gotta make sure that this exam is available to the student for two hours if I give them a time limit of two hours. So how do I do this? I'm gonna click edit. And on that first page where we have all the options and we have our dates and times, instead of modifying what's currently there, we're going to click plus add and we'll be adding an exception. So we're gonna click plus add. We're gonna select Herbert test 01. That's the person we gave an extra hour to. We're going to now make it available from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. because that's two hours, right? Okay, and we're also gonna make it due at 12 p.m. Okay. So you can see that the top part that said everyone now says everyone else. So everyone else is getting the one hour. This student is getting the two hours. Now let's say that I want, I need to allow Herbert Test 02 to take this uh, quiz tomorrow at 10 a.m. He still only gets one hour, but uh, he needs to take it tomorrow at 10 a.m. for some reason. Again, I'm going to click plus add. I'm going to select Herbert Test 02, and I'm going to make this available from 10 a.m. tomorrow. Oops, typing too fast. Okay, and I'm going to make it open until 11 a.m. tomorrow, so that's one hour later. And of course, I'm going to make it due tomorrow at 11 a.m. So Herbert Test 01 gets two hours today from 10 to 12. Herbert test 02 gets one hour tomorrow from 10 to 11. Everyone else except those two is get, taking the exam today from 10 to 11 getting one hour. So you just keep adding exceptions. 
Yes, this is the way that you would accommodate a student that needs accommodation. So if a student, I know there's circumstances, for example, where the student uh, has to take the exam at a different time. This is how you do it, like Herbert test zero two. The student might need a uh, time and a half. This the you give them the extra 30 minutes and you also then open it up for them for an hour and a half for example if they need to have several attempts you do it the way um you do the the uh, i did the test student um you can do that ahead of time i was just showing you the more difficult case where they've already taken it you can give them an extra attempt ahead of time so if that's the accommodation um, you can have combinations where for example you could have a student that needs to take it at a different time for longer again you would give them extra time and also assign it to them for that different date and time so this is all the instructor sets all this up uh, of course the uh, the interface and the instructions from dress let you know what kind of accommodation you're supposed to give and then you adjust your quiz as you need to for this so this covers accommodations as well as if you need as i said to give someone another attempt because something went wrong things like that or they're sick or anything like that it covers those kind of situations as well um, I've seen many yes yeah, so um, you need to speak to dress but if you're taking it through canvas and they're taking it together at dress uh, again you'd have to set it up in canvas with the dates and time when they're going to be going over there um and give them extra time and all this you have to set it up ahead of time for them so when they arrive at dress they can take the quiz at that time for the amount of time they're supposed to be allowed to take it so just to be clear i am a canvas admin i do have access to uh to all the courses and things but we do not touch courses um you're basically the owner of your own course so we won't go and make modifications and things like that we will assist you if you have issues and things like that but we won't be going around modifying courses and dress uh staff do not have access to any of this um at all so i'm a canvas admin i have access to a lot but we don't touch okay uh I, let me just make sure i think we covered everything so now we can cover the questions so first off i want to make sure do you think you have your question about um concerns about the time limit for certain people uh, again you can choose to give those people more time you can choose to not have your quiz have a time limit it's up to you uh what you would like to do for that um now about fudge points <clears throat> so when you go to a speed grader the point about fudge points, uh, let me get to test student. Fudge points here. This is uh, to adjust the total grade. So I know, for example, in the past, I've had professors who wanted to adjust and curve the grades up. Now, I would strongly not suggest that you use the feature in Canvas to curve grades because that feature is a statistics mathematical tool that will basically take your students grades look at the average you want everyone overall to have and it will shove all the grades into a perfect curve which will sometimes mean that some students lose marks and some students gain marks uh, most professors think of curving as adjusting everyone's grade up so when you do that, you might do your math on an Excel sheet and think, okay, I need to give um, these people these points, or I want to give everyone one extra point or two points, whatever decision you made, you can use the fudge points to adjust. So for example, in this case, perhaps everyone is doing um, not so great, and I want to just give everyone an extra point. So I'll just put in one fudge point and update the score and that point will get added to their existing points. 
So that's how, what the fudge points are, are kind of for, it's to adjust. You can also use fudge points if, for example, something went wrong with the question and you know, you're like, okay, I'm just gonna give people an extra point. Um, yes, the fudge points are after they take the quiz. You can't, this does not exist while they're taking the quiz. So all this entire speed grader interface is once they've submitted the quiz. And do keep in mind that once the students click take the quiz, they are locked into whatever version of that quiz they started. So please do not make adjustments while they're taking the quiz because they will not see whatever you modify. So if you modify a question while they're taking it, they will not see the new question. Um, you can make all the questions essay type. You can always, you know, disagree with, uh, with Canvas and modify these points. But if you want to do all the grading, I would suggest you, you use essay type as a fill in the blank um, type of thing. So all the students will just get that box and type in their answers. And then you'll have to do all the grading yourself. There will be no automatic grading. So the essay type question is one where Canvas won't grade anything. So you'll be able to uh, grade all their stuff. But everything else, Canvas will do filling the bank. Again, you can go through and if you disagree, like let's say someone wrote in here, uh, 1,939 or wrote year 1939, you know, you're like, oh, this person should have gotten the grade, right? But I didn't think they'd write it that way. You can always disagree and override this, the points here. So, yeah. Okay, now, how do you put the um, exam to both your uh, sections? So I'm going to go to one of my other courses. And let's pull this course. So you'll be going to the, so you'll create the final exam in one of your sections. Now you'll go to your other section and you have two options. If you're using the exact same exam, okay, we're going to go into uh, settings in the second section. We're going to settings and we're going to click import course content. Okay. The course I was working in is called Canvas Basics Demo Course. So I'm going to click here, copy a Canvas course, and I'm going to put Canvas Basics Demo. Now keep in mind that for you, you'll get a drop down list of your existing courses. I'm an admin, so I have to actually type and search for my particular course. Then instead of all content, you click select specific content then you hit import, okay? And now it's expecting me to tell it what to import. I'm gonna click select content down here on this first line. And now it's showing me everything that's in Canvas demo. And when I go to quizzes, you can see final exam as quiz is right here. I select this and click select content. It will take it a minute to bring it over, start it. I'm just refreshing the page because I'm a little impatient. All right, it's completed. I go back to my quizzes section. Of course, this thing has a lot of stuff, so I'm gonna have to find this thing. Final exam is quiz right here, already published. So if it was published in the other one, it'll come over published. It has uh, the dates and time. It does not have the exceptions, okay? Because those students were in the other course. So all the exceptions I added for Herbert Test 01, it's not gonna bring that over. It's just gonna bring the basic uh, availability and due dates. And there's all my questions, all my points, everything right there. So I imported the entire final exam. Now, if you slightly modify your quizzes, but you want access to all those questions you made, you can also import just the questions. So when we go to settings, you click import course content. You click again, copy a Canvas course at the top. 
I'm gonna put again canvas basics demo. Okay, I'm gonna again select specific content. This time when I click select content, instead of bringing the quiz, I'm bringing the question banks. There'll be unfiled questions. That's where it throws all my quiz questions. And when I bring those over, when I'm creating a new exam, I'll be able to find those questions. Yeah, so I imported a question bank. Again, this is if I don't want the exact same exam, okay? If I want just some of the questions and I want to add different questions, right? So this, I brought in what is called the question bank over from my other course. And now I'm going to create a new quiz. I'm gonna to have to do all the setup with all the settings and all that. But when I go to questions, instead of new question, I'll click find questions and here are those questions right here unfiled questions from and this is my previous stuff okay so this is the the latest one I in uh, brought over it's four questions right here is following countries declare war on Germany. So these are all World War II questions that I had in there. And I can choose to add in all or some of these questions I brought over. And then I just click add questions and there's all my questions from the other place. And I could have chosen to only bring a couple, of, to only put in a couple of them. But again, this method means that one is for people who want different questions, but there's a whole bunch of questions in common. Um, because it does require you to reset up the prompt, all the options, the dates, all of that stuff all over again. So this is not a worthy exercise if you're not changing the questions drastically between. Because my other quiz that I imported, I can still edit in. So when I look at my final exam as a quiz, I import it here, but I can just unpublish it and go and edit this. And if I want an extra question for this section, you know, I can add a new question. Let's put another essay too and make an essay question. Is this is extra question for section two. Obviously, I'd be writing the prompt and stuff. And then it's that easy for me to add things or remove things from the quiz. And then when I'm happy, I just publish it again. And now there's a new version in my second section. So again, importing question banks instead of entire quizzes makes sense if you're gonna make quite different. Yeah, you can put as the prompt. So let's go back to this over here. So when I make these questions, you'll see that all of them have the same prompt interface. So this, this is the prompt. All of the questions have the exact same interface for your prompt, for where you put the question in the instructions. And you can see, I can embed you know, I could grab a YouTube code right here, you know, if I want to embed a YouTube video. I can link to something right here. I can put in an image. Just click the little mountains inside of the square, and then you can put in one of your files. So I'm gonna put this particular file. So my files is the ones from your account instead of the course i always suggest for quizzes use your uh, my files the my files folder and then i click update and there's my picture so you can put this in multiple choice multiple answer essay questions all of them have the exact same interface for the prompt the question the thing the difference is that ex aside from essay type the answers the students can give you are text only for the most part. 
if you do essay type, then they get the same interface to give you a response. So they can uh, embed pictures or link to things or put in tables and all that stuff as well. Um, you can also put formulas. There's a formula button right next to the images button and it has a formula interface. You might, you know, find it maybe more limited than you'd like, but there are equation interface as well here. And you can use latex. It does rec uh, recognize latex. Okay. So we have gone quite over. <laughs> um, I hope that I uh, answered all your questions. And um, I hope you have a very nice day.